What is radio frequency of the spine? And why does burning of nerves in your back potentially help you? If you want to know about that question and you want the answer, stay tuned to this video for why it can provide you pain relief. If we haven't met, I'm Dr. Orlando Landrum, a regenerative medicine and interventional pain specialist who helps patients understand their options for pain relief and improving their lives to be able to lead the life that you deserve. Today, we're going to talk about radio frequency ablation and what you might feel as a patient, what's being, what's taking place and exactly how you're experiencing it. So first and foremost, radio frequency ablation is the selection of specific pain nerves that are targeted towards the facet joint of the spine. Those joints are actually gonna be look, located within the areas right in here so that you can see these joints allow for mobility of the spine. And though that mobility of the spine basically has some pluses and some minuses to it. The major plus is that it can be able to allow for us to be able to do all the activities that we would normally hope to do. But that repetitive motion also results in continuous wear and tear that sometimes can result in pain. In this video, we're going to talk about using radio frequency ablation, which is a special type of technique that targets the nerve to that joint that I just showed you. Now, in a previous video, we referenced that that joint is supplied by a sensory nerve predominantly. And prior to doing radio frequency, we have diagnostic blockade, which are certain nerve injections with local anesthetic near that joint to get clarity about if doing this procedure would provide benefit or not. So in this video, what we're gonna do is show you exactly the technique, as well as what are the different sides of needles. So that way you can have some understanding about what you might be experiencing. And spoiler, we will be showing the needles. So if you're a bit squeamish about that, that may be something that you want to either change and skip ahead in the video so you can get some better understanding. So we're gonna give you some insight into how and what the size of the needle feels like and what to be able to compare it to so you have an understanding of exactly what you might be getting into. You can see the size comparison. So that's the lead. That's the coffee twizzler and you can see it's almost nearly twice the size. A lead versus a coffee twizzler, almost twice the size. The Q-tip's head is maybe three times the size, if not greater. And the shaft is about twice the size of what the needle with the electrode or lead inside is like. Compare the needle with the lead inside or electrode to toothpick. You can see the toothpick is also twice the size of what we are looking at with the needle with the electrode in place. And we take a look at how this compares to a paper clip. You can see that the needle with the electrode, now the needle's kind of approaching the size close to the, the gauge of a paper clip, but the electrode itself is much smaller in size. Let's give you some insight about how we're gonna use this needle. Because basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that needle and we're gonna put an element in it like this, which you may not be able to see all that well, but it is a slight probe that supplies heat at its tip. Be a needle like such, you can see it. And then you take and we place that probe here. And you can really see how thin that probe is. And that probe then gets placed so that finally it provides a small element that's there that allows for heat at the very tip. And that is what does all the work. What you can be able to see is if this is the spine and we're using this in rough approximation because obviously different doctors will do it differently. That needle is placed at some point that's called a superior articulating process. So you see it roughly placed back here away from the traditional big nerve root, but where the nerve is that supplies the joint. And so that nerve root that's present further back here 
is what's going to be targeted a little bit lower down in the areas in, in and around here. Okay. And so that is what gives sensation to the joint. So if we're showing you this exactly, how does this work? So how this works is the following. Those needles are then connected with different connections to this machine. And there are different types of machines for different radio frequency ablations that are in place. But as we take a look, what we'll do is we'll have a machine similar to this. You'll start the procedure. And what you'll do is you'll go through and you'll hit the doctor or the nurse will hit various different areas. They'll select different leads that'll be associated with it. And then they'll do more than likely two different tests. The first test is a stimulation test that's sensory in, nation, in nature. So in essence, what you'll see is the doc will select the sensory component, they'll hit start, and in hitting start, they'll go to a certain degree of resistance as well as current that's applied. They'll ask you as the patient, are you feeling anything in certain parts of your back, your middle back or your neck? And then depending on where that location is and whether it's appropriate or not, they will stop it. And then they'll talk to you a little bit, have a discussion with you, and then request that you understand, is there a potential benefit or not? And can you be able to de de decipher, is it going into your limbs? Is it in your arms? Is it in your legs? Preferably not. And then following that, they'll do a test that's called a motor test. Well, you take a look, they'll connect in that lead as mentioned before. And then on connection, connecting that lead, they'll start the machine and it will ramp up to a certain degree on current. And that current will then mimic a tonic twitch. So you see either that area in the back, in the neck twitch with the hope that you don't have a twitch that's present in your leg or in the context of your arm so that it stays in the trunk and it doesn't move from there. Following that, they will stop that, talk to you, have some understanding about what's going on. And then after having that understanding, then they more than likely will select a radial frequency ablation temperature and time. And so what that entails is the doc will connect in the various leads with the cords as mentioned before. They'll get everything in place, make sure that you're good. And then from there, they will start it. And when they start that, they'll more than likely have a little prep. And then the machine will start and it will heat to a certain temperature. And in heating to that temperature, it then will provide that degree of stunning to the nerve that supplies the joint specifically. What you may feel is some degree of heat, but depending on what the doc does prior to that, whether they apply some local anesthetic, where they give you some oral sedation, where they give you some other treatment options down that needle that's hollow in nature prior to placing the probe, you may feel little to nothing. And what you can kind of see is that there is an increase in temperature that then plateaus and it lasts for a period of time. And that's variable depending upon the doctor and the facility. Following that, for most patients, they will have not immediate relief. It typically varies from person to person. Um, but thereafter, they can be able to get relief that starts and can last them for a number of months. So this is what radial frequency is, what you feel, what the size of the needle happens to be, what are the different parts of the actual procedure, so you can have an understanding exactly what takes place and be able to be ready to get your best result. Question of the day. If you have had a radial frequency ablation, what part of your body did you have it? How long did it last for you in terms of pain relief? And did you have any side effects associated with it? Please leave that in the comments below. If procedures like this interest you in terms of knowing different options so that you can have a net positive return on what it is that you're trying to do in terms of improve your overall condition, please hit the like button so that we know that what we're giving to you in terms of content is something that you want. And please hit the subscribe button so you can learn about more and new innovative procedures that provide pain relief 
and help you be able to punch pain in the face and get back to leading the life that you deserve. Thank you for joining.